the top 10 places and things you should know before visiting Point Loma, San Diego. Today we'll start in the heart of Point Loma, then we'll visit popular places like the Cabrillo National Monument, Old Point Loma Lighthouse, Shelter Island, Liberty Station, and more. We'll explore Point Loma's unique history and visit a few of the local favorite beaches, parks, restaurants, and shops. Then we'll head to nearby areas to see some of the places many tourists miss. Along the way, we'll share our top tips. Point Loma is a beautiful peninsula in San Diego known for its breathtaking views, historic landmarks, arts, and culture. The peninsula defines San Diego Bay, with its total length spanning about 18 miles of coastline along the Pacific Ocean around to the San Diego Bay. It's a 10 to 20 minute drive from downtown San Diego, depending on the traffic, and it's known for its maritime culture, naval history, the beautiful views, shops, and restaurants. Prior to European contact, the Kumeyaay people had a fishing village here. They also harvested mussels nearby at Ocean Beach. In 1542, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was the first European to land here at a location now known as Ballast Point. And in 1935, the United States Navy opened a submarine base here at the same location. During World War II, thousands of troops were stationed or trained at Point Loma's military bases, and from then on, the community grew quickly. Today, Point Loma is known for the scenic views, historic landmarks, arts, culture, and food. Here are our top 10 must-see attractions for your next visit. First is the Cabrillo National Monument, a historical site located at the southernmost tip of the Point Loma Peninsula. This monument commemorates the first landing of a European, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, here on September 28, 1542. The Cabrillo National Monument was officially recognized by President Woodrow Wilson in 1913. The grounds have some of the best views of San Diego's harbor and skyline. To the south, you can see Coronado Island stretching along the Pacific Ocean south all the way to Mexico. If you're interested in the history of San Diego, this is a great place to learn about the Kumeyaay people and early European explorers. The visitor center offers souvenirs and merchandise with an amazing view of the location where Cabrillo's ship landed. A short walk away is a statue of Cabrillo himself looking over the bay. This is one of the most iconic photo locations as the site has a 180 degree bird's eye view of San Diego. Continuing along the trail, you'll find the old Point Loma lighthouse and remnants of past military installations. There's also an area dedicated to whale watching and learning about the local sea life. The old Point Loma Lighthouse is a historical landmark that dates back to 1855. It was the first lighthouse here in San Diego and served to help sailors navigating the waters nearby. For 36 years, the lighthouse helped to guide mariners through the night. But as time took its toll, in 1891, the old Point Loma Lighthouse was replaced by a new lighthouse closer to the shore. Today, the building serves as a museum, showing visitors a view of the 1880s. While visiting, you can explore the lightkeeper's home where they lived with their families. Down the short path is an area celebrating the diverse sea life and ecosystems along the California coast. And you can even see the old military bunkers that once protected the area overlooking the Pacific Ocean. If you're enjoying the video so far, please hit the like button, it really helps the channel. And for more videos about San Diego and Southern California, subscribe and let us know where you'd like us to visit next in the comments below. Alright, back to the video. A short drive downhill is the Point Loma Tide Pools, and they're also part of the Cabrillo National Monument Park. The tide pools have become a favorite attraction in the Point Loma community and San Diego. They lie on the western edge of the Point Loma Peninsula, and during low tides, the rocky intertidal zone is exposed, showing sea anemones, sea stars, crabs, urchins, and more. The tide pools are open to the public, and they're an ideal place for exploration and learning about the local sea life. A short drive away is the Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery. The Federal Military Cemetery overlooks the San Diego Bay and the Pacific Ocean. The cemetery was established in 1882 and was named after Major General William Stark Rosecrans. The cemetery contains more than 100,000 graves of veterans and their eligible dependents from various wars and conflicts. An interesting piece of trivia is that this is also a filming location for the film Top Gun Maverick. Loma Land was a theosophical community in Point Loma that operated from 1900 to 1942. Led by Catherine Tingley, it was a school, cultural center, and a residential community. You can still see the architectural influences there today at what is now Point Loma Nazarene University. 
Loma Land's residents transformed the neighborhood into a lush area that they called the Wooded Area. The Raja Yoga Academy emphasized holistic development, including music and drama, and today you can still visit the Greek theater they built originally for the plays they held there. In 1942, the community disbanded and the society relocated. Today, the historical buildings in Point Loma Nazarene University preserve Loma Land's legacy in San Diego's cultural history. Liberty Station is a waterfront community and a commercial center. It sits at the northeastern edge of Point Loma in San Diego. It was once a naval training center and today is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, with many of the structures designated as historical sites. After the training center closed in 1997, dozens of historical buildings were adapted and the urban center now features hotels, restaurants, breweries, offices, schools, and the popular Liberty Public Market. Here, visitors can try a variety of selections from diverse foods and beverages to pastries and craft beers and fine wines. In the surrounding area, you can find restaurants and breweries, coffee shops and stores. Liberty Station has much more to offer than just foods, as it's also a center for San Diego's creative community, with museums and galleries, design studios, dance companies, and other cultural organizations. It also features the unique Loma Club Golf Course, a nine-hole course left over from the site's history as a naval training facility. A few of the unique attractions include Wonder Spaces, which is an ongoing art exhibition with a VR film series. There's the New Americans Museum, which features exhibits on themes of immigration, as well as an oral and visual history studio. The Visions Museum of Textile Art has a blend of exhibitions, educational programs, community events, all aimed at celebrating quilts, textiles, and fiber as fine art. The Nautical History Gallery and Museum shares the history of the U.S. Navy, its ships, and how they have evolved over time from the Revolutionary War through the Civil War, World War I and II, and the beginning of naval aviation and the Women's Museum of California is dedicated to the history of women and has an exhibit space, library, archives, and a store with items exclusively handmade by women. Right next to the Esplanade Canal is NTC Park, which is a 46-acre mixed-use waterfront park. Some interesting trivia about the canal is that it used to be the mouth of the San Diego River connecting to Mission Valley before the river was diverted towards Mission Bay. Sunset Cliffs is an affluent coastal community in Point Loma bordered by the Pacific Ocean and Ocean Beach to the north. There are surfing spots below the cliffs and trails popular for walking and watching the sunset. To the south is Sunset Cliffs Natural Park, a natural reserve popular among hikers, photographers, bird and whale watchers. And for thousands of years, the Kumeyaay people visited Sunset Cliffs to harvest seafood catching fish using yucca fiber nets, harpoons, and fish hooks. During the Panama exhibition in 1915, sporting goods manufacturer Albert Spaulding spent $2 million to hire Japanese architects to construct bridges, trails, benches, and a stairway into the ocean. In the 1950s, these structures were removed for safety concerns. In 1973, the city of San Diego bought the southern hillside section to be used as a habitat preservation area. Today, the cliffside trails are popular despite being underdeveloped, with unstable cliffs posing a risk to hikers. There are frequent lifeguard rescues here, and visitors are urged to stay away from the dangerous cliffs, and cliff diving is prohibited. Sunset Cliffs is also known for the sea caves. Here's one of the most famous caves here. It can only be accessed at negative tides when the water is low enough to enter the cave on foot. Next is Shelter Island and the neighborhood of La Playa. La Playa is a bayfront neighborhood in Point Loma that includes Shelter Island. It's located on the east side of Point Loma facing the San Diego Bay. La Playa is one of the oldest residential areas of San Diego and has some of the most expensive homes in the city. It's the site of the original port of San Diego and marks the end of the La Playa Trail following the footsteps of early European settlers on the west coast. Some of the hidden gems here at La Playa are the Lucy Evans Lauren Memorial Garden, which is a public garden in located on the corner of Golden Park Avenue and Lucinda Street. It's open to the public with free admission. There's also Kellogg Beach, which is a small quiet beach that is a result of sand dredged in the construction of Shelter Island. It's a dog-friendly beach with free parking and a beautiful view of the bay. Shelter Island is a 1.2 mile long peninsula and harbor in the San Diego Bay. It was originally a sandbar used for seaplanes. In 1934, dredging to deepen the San Diego Bay was repurposed to form the island connecting it to Point Loma. Ever since, it has become one of San Diego's principal boating centers. Shelter Island has a Polynesian theme and a nautical atmosphere with destinations like the Konakai Resort and Bally High Restaurant. 
Shelter Island Drive runs the length of the island, and along the road are a variety of art installations. These include works like the Japanese Friendship Bell, which was donated by San Diego's sister city, Yokohama. The Pearl of the Pacific, which is a giant pearl-shaped fountain surrounded by colorful mosaics. The Tunamin's Memorial, which is a bronze sculpture and tribute to tuna fishermen who were once an important part of the local economy and culture. And the Endless Wave Sculpture, which symbolizes the connection between Shelter Island and the ocean. Nearby, you'll find the starting point for many sports fishing and whale watching excursions. Visitors can book trips to fish for local species or observe migrating gray whales during the winter months. One such tour is the San Diego Seal Tour, a well-known tour in a specially designed vehicle which is fit to navigate both the land and the sea. A few of the most popular restaurants in Point Loma are right next door at America's Cup Harbor. This area is the coastal part of the Roseville Fleet Ridge neighborhood, which extend up the hill providing some of the most iconic views of San Diego. This area is known for its Portuguese community tied to the Portuguese fishermen who settled in the area. Some people refer to the area as Tunaville because of its association with the tuna fishing fleet. Fleet Ridge is named for its developer, David Fleet, who is a son of Reuben H. Fleet, who has a science museum named after him at Balboa Park. Here you'll find Point Loma Seafood, which is one of Point Loma's highest rated restaurants that also sells a variety of fresh seafood. They're known for their fried and fresh seafood dishes that you can enjoy with the views of San Diego Bay. On this day, we tried the combo plate. Not only is the food great, they also have great cocktail and tartar sauce. Close by is Mitch's Seafood, which is a popular spot among locals, usually with a line wrapping around the building. An interesting bit of history is the MTV show The Real World San Diego was filmed here with a cast living at a house at 4922 North Harbor Drive, which according to Google Maps is now the office for an AI company. Although technically part of San Diego, Harbor Island is close by and similar to Shelter Island as it was also a product of dredging as part of a San Diego Bay development plan. The project created a space for mixed use of commercial and recreational uses. The island is two miles long with public spaces like Harbor Island Park, Spanish Landing Park, and Cancer Survivors Park. Harbor Island is home to the popular Costera and Sea Level Lounge, as well as Tom Ham's Lighthouse, known for their cuisine and as a wonderful wedding venue. There are also the Hilton and Sheraton hotels that are convenient for travelers with the San Diego International Airport just across the street. Point Loma Heights is a hilly and coastal neighborhood that's largely a residential community. Some of the hidden gems here are the Point Loma Native Plant Garden, which is a 10-acre garden that features many rare and endangered native plant species that are found along the San Diego River. There's also the Famosa Slow State Marine Conservation Area, which is a natural reserve that showcases the region's diverse marine life and ecosystem. The Midway District is one of the main access points connecting Point Loma to the rest of San Diego. Rosecrantz Street connects Point Loma to the surrounding highways. The Midway District is mostly a commercial area with shopping centers, stores, and restaurants. It's home to the Pachanga Arena, which is scheduled to be updated in the near future into a new sports arena. It's also home to the weekly swap meet in the arena's parking lot. One of my favorite restaurants here is Phil's Barbecue, which is close to the sports arena. Point Loma borders Ocean Beach, which occupies about one mile of coastal area along the Pacific Ocean. Ocean Beach is known for its laid-back beach community, hippie and new age culture, the beautiful beaches, eclectic shops and restaurants. Although it's not technically part of Point Loma, it's very close, and if you're visiting the area, you may want to visit Ocean Beach. It's home to the longest concrete pier on the west coast, a commercial strip called Newport Avenue with eclectic shops and restaurants. It's also home to one of the most well-known dog beaches, which was the first official leash-free beaches in the United States. To learn more about Ocean Beach, join us by clicking here and continuing the adventure. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.